So with any further progress within the grounds of Basin House blocked at uh, the bridge, we find ourselves in Old Basin itself. In front of me, we got Crown Lane. Now our canal, as it came out of the grounds of Basin House, it's very difficult to see in the sun there, but it would have swung sharply this way. The trees that you can see, it's very difficult to see because the sun, I'm sorry about that. But the trees that you can see there, I believe is the southern bank of the canal. I would have been on the southern bank and it would have gone across Old Basin Royal British Legion car park and directly in front of me would have been another bridge. Now before we go any further we'll take our first delve into the National Library of Scotland mapping site and first we'll view the modern overhead view. Now if you remember also we left part one and that was here or here exactly and this is the bridge in Basing House, Basing House being all this here you can clearly see the ruins and if you also remember it was blocked off directly after the bridge, so there's absolutely no identifying features as you can see there. This is the route of the canal, and it's all completely built over. Then the next part we came to was the Royal British Legion car park, where you just saw me enter and exit, and that can be found here. And it's at this point here, on Crown Lane, where Crown Lane Bridge would have been located. So if I switch to the 1910 map, and as far as the canal is concerned, it makes things much, much clearer. Here, once again, we've got Basing House. And here's Basing House Bridge. Obviously, the canal still exists after it in those days. This is the area which is now completely built on. This is Crown Lane coming down here, Crown Lane Bridge. Now, here we have the Old Wharf. And that was the area where the barge Basingstoke, that was its the end of its journey when uh, Mr. A.J. Harmsworth attempted to get to Basingstoke in 1913 but was thwarted by low water levels and excess vegetation and if you remember I mentioned in part one he got a little bit further as far as Broadwater but that was only in, in order to turn the barge around again. So looking at the canal it now enters as it starts going towards Basing or it further into Basing it goes into a very deep cutting and it ventures under another bridge this road here is Church Lane so this obviously is Church Lane Bridge and this is the point where we'll pick up the exploring again I always think that as close to Basingstoke that old Basing is it's managed to retain quite a bit of charm and it and it possesses quite a few significant and very historic buildings but when it comes to the canal it seems that the heritage of that canal has been utterly lost and there's absolutely no recognition whatsoever And I think that disinterest or even neglect of the past is shown most in old Beijing canal bridges or in the majority of cases the lack of them. This one on Church Lane is an exception or at least part of it is. The north wall still exists but the south wall has completely gone. Now I'm deep in Old Basin now and I'm walking along uh, Milking Pen Lane and to my left is the, there's, there's still a recognisable untouched part of canal and there it is 
and that's just quite deep down now this area here was known as cuckoo bridge the bridge is obviously long since gone but there we have everything seems to be with the sun in it today i hope you can see that properly but that's that's quite a deep cutting isn't it I mean, it only goes a few yards and then you've got infill a bit further up and we're only a few yards away from the last bridge unfortunately on the other side as usual we have buildings so we're out of old basing now cuckoo bridge is that way and i managed to navigate and fight my way through some trees and brambles and in this deep cutting here we have some untouched and obvious remains of our abandoned canal and it even has water in it so it doesn't even look abandoned we've got our towpath just down there unfortunately at this point it's it's inaccessible inaccessible uh, so I'm just gonna have a, a little look further down there and see if I can get a bit nearer so just a little bit further on from where I was earlier um, as you move away from Cuckoo Bridge the canal takes an extreme bend yet another one as it moves that way towards Hatch but what I, what I wanted to demonstrate to you was look at this very steep bank now on the other side of that is the canal which is in a very deep cutting now this looks to me like the earth that was removed from the cutting has been piled up here to make this embankment and hopefully as we climb this embankment on the other side if I'm lucky we'll find the canal oh, let's Well, it's not very clear, I'm afraid. You can see water down there, that is the canal. But even now, I mean, it's December now, and it's very, very overgrown. Let's have a look a bit further down. I don't think we're gonna see much more, to be honest with you. very spongy this ground very clumpy grass good for exercising though well, this is the last chance saloon here because we have a hedgerow blocking our way so if I can't see anything over the embankment here then we won't see any more. Let's have a go. And now we can see, once again, we can see quite deep. Once again, the sun's not doing us any favours. You can just see some very stagnant, muddy water down there. It's very far down though. Uh, and this bank is very steep. But this is as far as I dare to go. There's a barbed wire fence there anyway. You might be able to see the canal there, but it's inaccessible. It's very overgrown and it's impenetrable. So let's move a bit further up towards Hatch and the A30 road and see what we can find that way.
I've left Old Basing now and I'm coming into the village of Hatch. They're almost attached. The road in front of me you can see is the A30, which used to be the main road to London. And this is Hatch Lane. And the point in front of me where this telegraph pole is, used to be Hatch Lane Bridge. And if you look over there, you can see where the canal used to go. So this is the point now where I'm standing on Hatch Lane Bridge. And our canal used to go across there. I think the convenient dip there is quite deceiving. But it used to go through there. Obviously the new build houses have completely destroyed any evidence of it. And what we'll do, we'll now move out onto the A30, which is the road you can see just there. And we'll see if we can pick up anything of the old route. Well, I've now moved out onto the A30. Hatch Lane Bridge was just over there. Hatch Lane is that one rising. You can see actually the road rising and that would have been to cross over the original canal bridge, which obviously isn't there. But it would have come through here, round the back of that house now. And it would have reappeared pretty much the other side of that privet hedge and then you see the conifer trees over there. Now it's tantalizing to assume that that is actually one of the banks of the canal. It's pretty close to being on the alignment of it, but I don't want to take those assumptions. And I don't think there's really any way of finding out, even if it is on the alignment. It's a very modern feature. So this site here, believe it or not, we had another bridge. And the bridge was called Hatch Bridge, not to be mistaken with Hatch Lane, which was the one we looked at just a moment ago. And it would have crossed under the road here. Don't forget, this was a much, much less busy road in those days. It was still the main road to London, but much, much less busy. And it crossed under the road here. And it would have gone across over in that direction and the canal itself would have then headed where those houses are you can see through the trees and then it would have carried on that way so what we'll do now we'll cross over the a30 and see if there's any evidence over there so before i cross the a30 i'll briefly return to the map to go over where i've been and where i am at the moment so if you remember, I was in the trees trying to look down into the very deep cutting. We saw water, but couldn't get down there. It was just far too, you know, overgrown. And that was this point here. And if you look, you can see the canal line is clearly depicted by this line of trees. It comes all the way around here, around the back of Cavalier Road. And then it sweeps round this way. And if I just move the map up a little bit. There we go. So our canal comes down here. Now this is Hatch Lane. This is where I was on just a moment ago. And this is where Hatch Lane Bridge was. You see where the canal comes down here and intersects. It would have gone under the road there. This is where our canal line is now lost. I then came down here. Here's the A30, the main road to London. The canal would have, in fact, if I overlay the canal a little bit, There we go, you can see. So you can see the route of the canal. It comes down here, and I was walking just down here, and this is the site of Hatch Bridge, where it went under the A30, the very busy road. Now I said before I switched to the map view that I was going to cross the A30 and have a look over this side here. I did that. Unfortunately, there is absolutely nothing to see. The canal or any trace of the canal has been completely obliterated due to modern building. And if I overlay the, the route of the canal on top, you can see why. So here's the route of the canal. We've got the A30 here. This is Hatch Bridge. And as you can see, our canal has been totally destroyed by the build of these houses here. 
which stretches all the way to the motorway. So this is the M3 motorway. It's very noisy and busy. Now if you can, try to imagine the motorway gone, you're back in the 19th century. It's very quiet, it's very rural, it's green. There's very little industry around here, but what there is, is waterways, there's a river. And it's still there, just up there. But what also, there was a Basingstoke Canal. Now if you see the blue motorway sign, just the other side of that, that is the location of where the canal would have crossed the motorway here. But also, in more or less the area of the central reservation, you would have had a bridge. Not a big bridge, I don't even think it had a name, not one that I can find at least. And if you look on the contemporary maps of the time, it looks like a minor bridge, and I think it just went to a farm. So it was just an occupation bridge, I think. But nevertheless, it was, it was here, it was a bridge, and now it's been completely erased from history. Having crossed the motorway, have a quick look again at the modern day map with the 1897 overlay put on top. Now as you can clearly see the canal is in situ and the M3 cuts through it a few times in the hatch area. But whilst looking at this map I became curious about this short stretch here south of the motorway. Now could it still exist? It's a very long shot I know but I just had to investigate. So I've reached the south bank, or the south side I should say, of the M3. And when I looked at the maps, at the tiny, tiny semicircle or arc of canal that was left, I never thought for one moment that it would still be there. I hoped, but I never thought, how could it possibly be there after such a major engineering setup so close to it? Well look. Here it is. And I'll point it out if you can't see it. So we've got our south bank here. And it's easier to see if you look at the trees. The trees, the large trees, depict the bank itself. There's no large trees until you get onto the other side, which is obviously the north bank. You can see the canal bed in the middle next to the raised south bank and if I move on a little bit you can see the north bank and that's here sloping down you see it there it's not as pronounced as the south bank that's got a definite edge this one's far more sloping but it's definitely there there's no doubt about it and I think it's brilliant So a canal is now coming out of its small arc. It's only a very, very short piece of canal, 20, 30 yards at most, maybe not even that. But you can see it's now moving back in towards the motorway. It may be a bit difficult to see once again on the camera. Um, I don't really know how I can enhance it more. But you can see the south bank there, there's a definite dip here, if you can see that. And then on the north bank is pretty much covered over with vegetation and all sorts of crud. We must remember that it's, it's been the best part of a hundred years of vegetation and trees growing and dying here. And it's obviously years and years of build up. And what I think is also fantastic here on the footpath, this is a public footpath by the way, you can see the dip of the canal here. Let's step into it, and if you look across there, you may get a better idea. So I'm stood on the canal bed at the moment. There's our south bank there, and north bank would have been a bit further over here. As I said earlier, it's been filled in a bit. Now what I think is also good, we've got some chalk here. The chalk is the natural bedrock of this area. 
But don't forget, when the canal was constructed in the 1790s, this was cut out of the natural chalk. And you can see the slope coming down here. Where people have walked on here, it's worn away the soil to the bedrock. So you've got the natural cut of the canal here, which was cut some 230 years ago. Now sweeping across, as we said, it comes over in an arc. And our canal will now cross over the motorway. I don't know if you can see them, but there's some industrial units over there. That's where our canal route comes out, and I shall see you over there. Well, I'm back on the motorway again, and it's still very noisy and it's still very busy. But after finding that wonderful gem of a piece of undisturbed canal bed, the canal would have come out roughly over there, and it would have come in on a curve, and it would have swept into here. Obviously the barriers and walls weren't there in those days. I've returned back to the northbound side of the M3. The motorway can be found on the opposite side of this fence. The canal route would have snaked northeast through the fence here. And more or less at the area where the lamppost is would have been a small wooden footbridge. This photograph dated 1913 shows that bridge looking southwest in the process of being dismantled in order to let the barge Basingstoke through on that last failed attempt to reach the town. Now from that bridge the canal would have continued east for approximately 100 yards more or less sticking to the alignment present day road when it takes another southeast turn, crossing the motorway for a third time. And up here back on the footbridge we get a better view of the road and the old route of the canal. And as I said it carried on east before turning again and you can see the route by looking at the arrows. Well, I've crossed over the motorway again and this is the final time. Unfortunately you can still hear it um, but it's not as annoying as it was before. What I'm going to show you now, we have quite a dense amount of trees here. Let's just cross over this barrier without killing myself. Now if I poke the camera through there it's very difficult to see anything other than trees but if you can see the ground that will be the canal bed as it's coming from the hatch so it's coming this way and going along there and if we go back out onto the road so if we move down just a short distance it's still very difficult to to make out it's easier than it would be in the summer. It'd be utterly impossible in the summer. Let's cross over the barrier again. Now, just down there, as the road level gets lower, it tries. It meets up with the canal. The tree line that you can see there, just this side of the field, that is actually the south bank of the canal. I can't really see in there to see how defined it is, how well preserved the actual canal is. I think I can see something of a a bank but it's going to be impossible to see on the camera I don't know if you can see anything down there there's I don't know if you can see that bank there it might be the original it might not but what I'm standing on is obviously infill from the bridge that goes over the motorway so the ground here is very much raised above where the canal bed used to be and then from here it's obliterated and gone but from here, the canal, or the route of the canal I should say, would have joined up with this road. 
and this is Greywell Road and we're coming into the village of Maple Derwell now. Now the canal alignment would have been exactly the same as the road that you see now for a few yards 